Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for City of Greensboro news and information. The Greensboro Department of Transportation is sharing plans to update the downtown streetscape on Davie Street and a portion of February 1 Place. The public is encouraged to review and submit comments on the plans. Residents will have an opportunity to talk to city staff on Tuesday, April 27th. Appointments are required. RSVP for a time slot between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. The rain date is Wednesday, April 28th. This in-person opportunity will require attendees to wear a face covering and maintain proper social distancing. Disposable masks will be provided if an attendee does not have one, and hand sanitizer will be available. This project is part of the Downtown Greensboro Streetscape Master Plan, which is made possible by $25 million of voter-approved community and economic development bonds. Streetscaping serves as a critical infrastructure to improve pedestrian safety, encourage walking and biking, reduce automobile traffic, and improve the quality of downtown experiences. The streetscape plans are available on the city's website. The project will add wider sidewalks, buffered bike lanes, and space for outdoor dining. Additionally, decorative granite pavers on February 1 place will be featuring quotes from the Greensboro Four to honor this block's significance in the civil rights movement. For more information, contact Denise Conway, GDOT's engineering supervisor. The Neighborhood Development Department is asking residents to review and comment on two important documents, the Annual Action Plan and the Funding Chart. The Annual Action Plan, which describes programs and projects proposed for the next fiscal year, which runs from July 1, 2021 to June 30, 2022. The Annual Action Plan is considered the funding application for U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Community Development Block Grants, Emergency Solutions Grants, Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS, and the Home Investment Partnership Act. The funding chart includes the amount of assistance Greensboro expects to receive and the range of activities to benefit low- and moderate-income residents. Comments about these plans can be emailed to Caitlin Bowers, Verbal comments can be called in to 336-433-7266. Comments must be received by 11.59 p.m. on Tuesday, May 4th. All comments will be considered prior to any further action by the city towards implementing these plans. Anyone requiring an interpreter or other services in order to participate in any public-public related process should contact the Neighborhood Development Department. The City of Greensboro introduced a new sanitary sewer backup policy designed to reimburse homeowners for damages if the backup was caused by a city sewer main blockage. If a homeowner experiences a sewer backup, they may be eligible to receive assistance from the city for those damages. Residential backups generally mean a house may not be in compliance with state plumbing codes, which require a backwater valve along the underground service line of a home. This valve prevents sewage from getting into the plumbing. Reimbursement for damages caused by a sewer backup may be offered by the city if the following criteria is met. If the backup was caused by a blockage in the city's underground sewer main line and not in the connection to the homeowner's underground service line. If this is the first sewer backup at the address since February 1, 2021. If the homeowner signed a release waiving any further claims against the city and its staff in exchange for payment. And if the homeowner agreed to install and maintain a backwater valve in the service line to prevent future problems. For more information about the sanitary sewer backup policy, visit the city's website or call the city's contact center at 336-373-2489. The city developed a partnership with Cone Health to share a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Following these tips is an easy way to help each of us improve our quality of life. Let's take a moment to check out today's news for your health. If so, you're not alone. We're going to talk about ways to manage the stress as remote learning continues during this new normal. 
This is a stressful time for all of us and it is normal and appropriate for parents and for children to be experiencing the stress of COVID-19. Something that's been especially stressful is that it's put so many parents in the situation of having to juggle working from home with managing their children's remote learning. One thing that I recommend is looking for ways to establish boundaries. You could do that through establishing some semblance of a routine. It doesn't have to be a strict schedule, but just making sure that you have have, you know regular meal times and times of day when you're definitely working and times of day when you are definitely not working so one thing I definitely recommend is that parents try to set aside time for quality time with their kids you know we're around each other more now but the quality of that time has gone down for many of us try to set aside time for quality times so that you're not always trying to work while they're trying to go to school in the background but that there are also dedicated times that you spend to just enjoy each other's company when you see your child feeling stressed, one thing that I definitely recommend is being an active listener. So rather than waiting for your child to reach out to you, reaching out to them and letting them know that this is stressful and you're here for them. If your child doesn't want to talk about it, that's okay. Go ahead and give them their space. But at least that way they know that you're there and that their stress is normal. It's not something strange or wrong about them. When your child does come to you with concerns, the first thing that I recommend is to just listen to them. As parents, it's really normal to have an urge to comfort our children and reassure them that things are okay. But in this situation especially, that could inadvertently have the effect of invalidating their feelings. After you've listened to their concerns, see if there's something that they can do today that might make them feel a little better. We can't make the pandemic go away, but maybe there's some small thing that they can control in their life right now that might bring them some sense of relief. While a certain amount of stress is normal and even appropriate, there are some symptoms that may be a sign that you could benefit from further treatment. Among adults and children, these can include difficulties with sleep, changes in appetite that cause an impact on weight, either weight gain or weight loss, loss of interest in activities you or your child used to enjoy, difficulty focusing or paying attention, more frequent bouts of tearfulness, or even increased irritability. You may also experience excessive worry and difficulty relaxing, or a lack of energy and persistent feelings of fatigue. While children may also demonstrate all of those symptoms, they may also have unique symptoms of anxiety and depression. These can include fluctuations in grades. So for example, if you notice your child struggling with a subject that used to be easy for them, many children will manifest symptoms of anxiety and depression physically. So your child may complain of stomach troubles and not really be able to identify the cause. If your child is having difficulty focusing or avoiding activities that they used to like. That could be due to anxiety or depression related to the COVID-19 pandemic. If you or your child are experiencing any of these symptoms, or if you would simply benefit from talking to someone, many providers are offering telehealth visits that you can attend from the safety of your own home. While this time is challenging, it's important to remember that remote learning helps slow the spread of COVID-19 and keep children and family members safe. This will not last forever. By following these steps while remembering to wash your hands regularly, wear a mask when in public, and practice social distancing, we will get through this pandemic. Fair housing is not only a necessity, but it's also a right that should be experienced by everyone. A virtual workshop series places the emphasis on that point. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Throughout the month of April, the Human Rights Department has been hosting a weekly virtual fair housing series called A Home for Everyone. Each session lasts one hour and begins at 12 p.m. on Facebook Live. The remaining topics are as follows. Race, color, and disability will be the focus on Friday, April 23rd. The point is to educate anyone who may have been a victim of discrimination according to the fair housing law. 
Familial status and sex will be presented on Friday, April 30th. This session will provide information on fair housing law protections related to sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity. For more information, call the city's Human Rights Department at 336-373-2038. The Greensboro Police Department recently launched the Take Me Home program. This free program allows family members and legal guardians to upload critical information for individuals with a cognitive impairment or developmental disability. This includes those diagnosed with conditions such as autism, dementia, or Alzheimer's. In the event an individual who is registered in the Take Me Home program encounters police or is reported missing, law enforcement and emergency services personnel can use the registry to search for the person's contact information, a detailed physical description, and a photo of the person. This will save valuable time in safely getting the person home. The Take Me Home program is also helpful for people who are nonverbal or easily disoriented. The program is strictly voluntary and not limited by age or disability. All data is confidential and only accessible by City of Greensboro Public Safety personnel. For more information or to use the Take Me Home registry, visit the City's website. In response to changes in the state's COVID-19 recommendations, the Greensboro Parks and Recreation Department has updated its reopening operations. The department is now accepting picnic shelter reservations for parties with no more than 100 people. Gardens are accepting outdoor wedding reservations for up to 100 attendees. Facility rentals have resumed at the Barber Park Event Center and all recreation centers. These spaces are currently limited to 50% capacity. All renters must follow the state's COVID-19 safety rules, including the face covering requirement. The following facility hours have also changed for reservations for planned programs. All recreation centers will be open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Smith and Trotter Active Adult Centers will be open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Lakes have returned to their regular seasonal schedule by being closed one day a week, but otherwise open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday through Saturday and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Sundays. As the economy slowly recovers and job markets begin to reopen, hiring skilled workers is a top priority for many employers. Coming up after the break, learn about a program through Guilford Works aimed at giving job seekers new skills. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Millions of Americans filed for unemployment last year at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. With subtle signs of the economy making a comeback, people are eager to return to work. Joining me now to promote the adult pre-apprenticeship program is Melissa Smith. She is the business services consultant at Guilford Works. Hello, Melissa, welcome back. Hi, thanks for having me again. Thank you for joining me. Always good to see you. Yes. So tell me uh, a little bit about the Adult Pre-Apprenticeship Program in terms of when did it launch and how does it work? So we've actually started our program or having those intensive discussions back in 2019. So this is pre-COVID. Yes. <laughs> uh, we started having those conversations because in listening to our job seekers and the customers that we engage with in our centers, they are looking. They were looking for these types of opportunities, much like your youth-focused apprenticeship programs. Uh, we didn't see anything that was more of an adult-focused uh, yes. apprenticeship uh, opportunity. So we knew that there was an opportunity there, but also in having a lot of our uh, business-facing uh, meetings with our employers, they were saying the same thing about wanting to connect with having those unique and creative and effective talent pipelines. So we knew that if we married those two concerns together, we could create a wonderful program through a pre-apprenticeship or our formalized apprenticeship program. We uh, officially launched our program in March of 2020 okay. in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, and we have seen such immediate success. Oh, that's wonderful, and I love the fact that you thought about this before COVID struck yes. and that you were able to stay committed to this at the height of COVID if yes. you launched this in March when 
most employers were shutting down. They were shut down. Yes. So it's nice to know that you were creating an opportunity for folks to kind of get their foot in the door and yes. see where they are most comfortable. I'm assuming the program relies on partners to make yes. it possible. Yes. We heavily rely on our partnerships to thrive. So we currently have in our pre-apprenticeship track three partners, and I must uh, give credit to our apprenticeship NC facilitators for helping to uh, engage and create those relationships. So with our partners, I'll first start with the Forge. The Forge was our first partner for the pre-apprenticeship component. As you all know, that is a local makerspace here in Greensboro. Uh, we did engage with Joe Rotundi, and through him, we created our welding pre-apprenticeship track. So from there, we connected with our Triad Enterprises here in the Greensboro area. They are actually a minority-owned business here. They are an IT-based uh, cloud computing firm. So when we connected with Kevin Robinson, who was the founder and president, and Clyde Brown, we were able to create that pre-apprenticeship and also apprenticeship relationship with them as well. Our last partner is with the Nehemiah Community Empowerment Center, which is also here in Greensboro. They are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we connected with Pastor Randy Francis. And still riding that IT technology train, they have a wonderful um, computer support specialist program. So we're very excited to have three thriving tracks, yes. but we are excited to look into more industries as well. Wonderful, and those are really great industries as yes. people are interested in IT and all things technology, but yes. the Forge, as you mentioned, is very hands-on for very creative much. people who can make things out of nothing. Yes, yes. I won't be in the Forge because <laughs> it would, would still look like nothing after I'm done. <laughs> Now, I'm curious, how long typically is the pre-apprenticeship track, and are there credentials or certifications that come with that? Definitely, definitely. So overall, with any pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship track, we have to have a credential that is earned. So with all three of our current tracks, they will range between 12 to 16 weeks. Um, so if we start with the Forge, that is actually a 12-week program. They're earning their OSHA 10 certification. Wow. So this is certifi certification that's pretty much key in most industries, especially in advanced manufacturing. When we look at our triad, that is also a 12-week program and they are, will, will be receiving their CompTIA, which is like an IT fundamental certification and also their ASER Fundamentals certifications. And with the Nehemiah Center, uh, they are also receiving their CompTIA certification. And uh, at the conclusion of their training, they'll be taking their exam. Wonderful. Now you did mention your interest in expanding in other sectors. Yes. How yes. can anyone who's in the industry who's watching this become a potential partner for apprenticeships? Yes. And if somebody wants to be in the program itself, mm -hmm to learn a skill, yes. how, how does that work? Okay, so I'll first start with our employers. Um, like I mentioned uh, previously, we do have a lot of our information on our landing page on Gilbert Works. So if you go to gilbertworks.org, you'll see the talent gap answer. That's our, our phrase that we've used. Um, and you'll be able to connect with us directly on those employer partner opportunities there. And also hear from our partners on how it's benefited them so far. Um, with our job seekers, they are also able to connect with us that way, but you can also go through the NC Works Career Centers here in Greensboro and in High Point, and we can also uh, we can get you set up in that way. Okay. Um, we have uh, employer interest meetings every month. Okay. Our next meeting is actually on May the 4th okay. at 10 a.m. via Zoom, and that information can be found on our website as well. Perfect, and a great chance for them to ask questions. Yes. Well, Rich. Melissa, it's always good to see you. Always You've good to be here. You've come with a wealth of knowledge, and we really appreciate learning about this excellent program. Thank you. You have so many other wonderful programs through Guilford Works. Come back and keep us posted. Definitely. And let us know what's new and exciting. Okay, I sure will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned for some useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. 
The City Council is holding hybrid meetings where they assemble in the council chambers, but the public participates virtually if they want to address the council. The Greensboro City Council meetings are broadcast right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. City Council meets on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. To review the Council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn invites you to take the pledge to conserve water this month during the 10th annual Wyland National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation. This campaign challenges communities to pledge to use water more efficiently, reduce pollution, save energy, and explore ways to improve their community's health. Prizes are up for grabs, including $3,000 to pay utility bills, water efficiency products for your home, rebates, and other prizes. Participants can nominate a Greensboro charity to win a new Toyota Highlander Hybrid. There's still time to join Mayor Vaughn and other mayors across the country. The challenge ends on April 30th. Mayor Vaughn said, water is one of our most precious resources. We must work together to do our part to conserve water and use it wisely. That's why I am taking the pledge and asking Greensboro residents to join me as we show other cities how the Gate City takes pride in our planet. In the last 10 years, climate change and shifting weather patterns have affected the distribution of water, causing fresh water sources to be used at a quicker rate than they are being refilled. For more information or to take the pledge, visit the contest website at mywaterpledge.com. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first we have an important message about COVID-19. Remember the three W's. Wear a cloth face mask covering, wait six feet from others, and wash your hands often. By working together, we can adjust to this new normal and continue to save lives. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. If your household has been financially impacted by COVID-19 and you or someone you know needs help paying rent and or utilities, you can apply for funds from the Federal Emergency Rental Assistance Program. The city received nearly $9 million to award qualified renters within city limits, apply for up to 12 months of combined emergency rent and or utility payment assistance per household. Past due, current and future rental payments will go directly to landlords and utility companies and does not have to be repaid. Renters may apply or landlords may apply on the renter's behalf. U.S. citizenship is not required to apply. Applications are available online and can also be printed in 60 different languages. Visit the city's website for a list of documents you will need to attach to the application. The Emergency Rental Assistance Program is coordinated by the Neighborhood Development Department and administered by local partner agencies under contract. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO Shoutout. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to an outstanding employer. The Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities names Morgan Support Services the 2021 Outstanding Employer of the Year. This award honors an employer with an exceptional record of hiring or facilitating employment for people with disabilities. Morgan Support Services provides support to individuals with behavioral health diagnoses and developmental disabilities. Also, the Greensboro Aquatic Center, or GAC, is the 2021 Bryant-Taylor Barrier-Free Success Award winner. 
The GAC employs people with disabilities and offers year-round adaptive swim lessons. Both awards were presented during the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce Small Business Awards Ceremony. Please remember, as more places continue to open, wear your face covering, wait six feet apart, and wash your hands often. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our 5-Minute Flash Briefings, which airs on 90.1 FM. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro, and now GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.